It's cataractcoach.com. We've got a tiny pupil with synechiae being addressed with iris hooks with guest surgeon Brian Lee from Los Angeles. So fixating the eye with a finger, using a blade to make a paracentesis, and putting some viscoelastic in the anterior chamber. You can see how small the pupil is. The irregular dilation is from the posterior synechiae. And so we're going to address that with Dr. Lee here. He's fixating the eye, holding it with his finger while he uses a care tome to make a clear corneal incision. Um, that's totally in the clear cornea, no limbal vessels. And now using viscoelastic to break the posterior sneaky. This is important. You have to separate and uh, free up these adhesions. So the anterior lens capsule is adherent to the back of the iris, and that has to be separated all around. So he's taking his time here. Key move is to use a physical separation. Don't inject too much viscoelastic under the iris. You don't want to balloon up the iris. A little bit's okay. Now, again, fixating the eye to make incisions for the iris hooks. I like the use of the ink to help delineate. And also notice that these incisions are angled downward, so they're a little bit different than a paracentesis. And by angling them downward, it's going to make placement of the iris hooks a little bit easier because the iris hooks are in the correct plane. That incision is basically connecting the pupil margin to the limbus. Iris has been placed in the eye using two tying forceps. First step is to hook the pupil margin. So a little bit of a poor reflex there. The eye's drying out, so I think we're gonna squirt the eye. Beautiful. Now we can see better. Make sure that hook goes under the iris and captures the pupil margin. And then we're using two forceps. One will hold the hook still, while the other places the stay collar down at the limbus. And notice that Dr. Lee's only pulling the iris about halfway. And so he'll wait till all four hooks are placed before achieving maximum pupil expansion. And another one, and here's the third one. And you can adjust these as well. A few eyelashes in the way. Here comes the fourth hook. That looks great. And then here comes the adjustment. At this point, you can adjust the placement of them and slide them along the iris and also expand the pupil further. Capsorex is being performed using cystotome and then forceps. Let's just cut ahead. There's some hydro dissection. Incision is being enlarged slightly. And then phaco probe going in the eye. So you'll notice that there's not much leakage from the incision. So that means these paracentesis incisions, these incisions for iris hooks were made very well. And then the iris, as well as the hook itself, are they're blocking the egress of fluid there, so it keeps a stable anterior chamber. We'll speed up the video here to four times speed. Dr. Lee's doing a stop and chop. The first groove was made, rotated 180, an additional groove. So extending that main groove a little bit deeper, a little bit longer, and then cracking the nucleus into two halves. And this all goes routinely. And here comes a chop maneuver using some specialty ball tip chopper and removing the pieces slowly but surely. Notice that the doctor does a fantastic job of keeping the eye in primary position. The fluidics in the anterior chamber are quite stable, so clearly a very experienced surgeon. So removing the nuclear pieces, a little bit of time, there's the chopper again, going around to have a nice successful chop there, and repeating again and again. And nucleus is being removed quite nicely, We'll speed up through the rest of the case as well. I want to focus just on the iris hooks in this case. So you notice that the iris hooks do stay out of your way. It really does keep the pupil very well expanded. And there's less bulk inside the eye compared to a pupil ring. Also, with a tiny one millimeter synechiae pupil, it may be difficult to actually place a ring. So there we go. Looks good. Cortex being removed as well. We'll fast forward to the end, filling the capture bag. There's the nice round rexus. Here comes the IOL, single piece acrylic lens going in the capsule bag. And let's look to the end of the case for hook removal. So here's how he's doing it. First, releasing the stay collar. Next, pushing the hook in the eye a little bit more to release it from the pupil margin. Then rotating it so it's no longer hooking the pupil. And then pulling it out of the eye. And he'll repeat that for the other three. This is a very safe way of doing it. There is a shortcut. You can actually just grab the hook itself, 
and with a quick tug, it'll pull out of the eye because the hook is flexible. It will not typically damage the iris or cause any other issues. You actually don't have to do um, all these maneuvers. However, Dr. Lee's way is certainly the safer way. So last couple hooks being removed quite nicely, and this patient is expected to do very well after surgery. Now remember here at the end, we'll seal up our incisions. We have additional incisions. You have here a main phaco incision and the main paracentesis, plus four more smaller incisions that are placed for the iris hooks. So you want to seal all of these and then take your time to check at the end to make sure they're all watertight.